Uh, stop broadcast. Hang on. Okay, we're live. We are officially live, so you can do all the sharing and stuff. Yay. Hey, it's 10 o'clock. It's Saturday night, and we're Saturday uh, night. Stop live. broadcast. Hang on. Okay, we're live. Oh, we are officially live, so you can do all the sharing and stuff. Hold on. Yay. Hey, it's 10 o'clock. It's Saturday night, and we're Saturday uh, night. Stop broadcast. Hang on. Okay, we're live. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing myself over myself. This is so trippy, man. Yeah, I know. That was pretty trippy. So you may have to comment because I had to pause the video on my end. You may have to comment. Um, not comment. You may have to check out the comments as I'm doing this. I'll try to look on my phone as well. Okay. This is we're just going to be doing this in the time being until we can officially start the program in a minute or two when somebody decides to join us, and we'll we'll know if somebody's in the live room or not. Anyway, all right. So, uh, you still here? You still with me? Yes, I am. I'm just typing in uh, into uh, the page. Excellent. Yeah. News. Yeah, if I had uh, if I had my partner with me here, uh, Miss Bell, we'd be able to um, she'd be able to share it and stuff while we do this. Okay, as always, we hope you fast forwarded through the first two minutes of this video while we give it up. We officially have two viewers, and this is Let's Review Live on Saturday night with your host Rob Banks and a very good friend of mine and Mr. Pop Culture himself, Baz. Say what's up. What's up, guys? Excellent. So as we gear up for the next week, we are just constantly trying to improve, and we should be able to see the live comments this week. So if anybody wants to drive, drop a live comment, please do so now as we try to catch you guys live as we're doing this. Oh, we have three viewers now. Perfect. Okay, my channel. We're going to try and catch this as it's going. I'm going to have to drop this down. Hi, all. Yo. Yo, please drop a comment to let us know you are here with us. And I'm watching from the phone. Yes, R.C. Robbins in the room with us. What's going on, dude? How are you? Okay, we have four viewers. Let's kick the show off. Five viewers, we have enough. Let's start the show. Okay, so. Um, Hold on. I, I'm having. Can you read the. I can't read the chat, the live chat. Let's see. Yeah, I got it right up over here. Can you see this comment? Uh, Kev's Matrix. Hello, hello. What's going on, Kev's Matrix? How are you? Thanks for joining us. Um, I got it on my phone over here, and I have it in the corner uh, of the pages there as well, so I could see them too. Are you ready to do this? Okay, cool. Yeah, I guess I can't. I can't read the chat, so then you're gonna have to do that. I'll, I'll do the chat. Uh, I'll do the chat this week. Okay, so we're gonna start off tonight's episode by talking about a movie that we should have probably talked about two weeks ago, but I just happened to see today, and that is Ant Man and the Wasp. So I finally got my butt to the movie theater and was able to. Uh, what's up, Jez? I uh, was just able to see it. What did I think of Ant-Man and the Wasp? Um, I thought it was good, but not great. I thought it had a few moments that actually literally made me choke up. I think I almost cried at three moments during the movie. I thought it was very heartfelt, and, and there was a lot of nice personal scenes between Paul Rudd and his daughter, or, or rather Scott Lang and his daughter, and that was cool. I thought the action was a little underwhelming. I didn't expect Infinity War, and I didn't want Infinity War, but I did not think it was as good as the first movie. I thought it was, uh, at times, the comedy was a little forced and felt a little flat. Um, who's the Spanish guy in the movie? The funny guy from the first one. I forgot his name, too. Well, anyone, everyone knows who he is, the guy in the baseball cap. Luis. Luis. Luis, yes. Uh, he, uh, what's up, Kev? Okay, so... Um, he, I thought he was really funny in the first one. In this one, I thought it was kind of like forced into doing the same thing he did in the first one. So that didn't really work for me too much. I thought uh, the whole idea behind him centering to get the the mother, I thought that whole action sequence with the cars and stuff. They, we're going to get into a couple of spoilers here. The whole car action sequence. Michael Pena, that's right. R.C. Robin with the, with the name drop. Perfect. Um. I thought that car action scene chase was like a middle of the movie, would have been an awesome middle of the movie action scene, but not necessarily one to close the movie. That's why I thought it kind of felt a little like, eh, all right, that's kind of cool. I, I saw all this in the trailers, though. And once again, trailers giving away, and I avoid trailers, trailers giving away pretty much everything about a movie before you see it. Um, so I'm giving it 2.75 cups out of three, uh, or to, to three. 
So maybe like 2.9, 2.85 cups. And uh, it's not terrible. It's not one of the worst Marvel films, but for me, it falls in the bottom tier of Marvel films. So if you had like what you would consider like the, the middle of the road for Marvel movies, this to me falls below that, but not Thor the Dark World or even... It's like, but like in that area, like it's not Winter Soldier level. It's not Spider-Man Homecoming level. It's like nowhere near those movies, but it's like maybe a step behind Doctor Strange. It's better than Iron Man too. Oh God. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm in the, uh, I agree that it wasn't as good as the first one, but I think I liked it a little more than you did. Yeah, no, I, I did like the, uh, the, the movie. Yep, I agree. Frankie Fearless, what's up, man? Nice. Uh, we got a whole friggin' live cast with us tonight. Um, uh, love the drive. Yeah, the driving scene. There was a movie was filled with a lot of really cool little things, but nothing that really blew me my mind. Okay, um, what about those action sequences? Um, I mean, it must have been a lot of CGI and a lot of work to uh, have them shrink and then enlarge so many times within those, you know, those fights. That was, no, that was really cool. See, that's what I, this is what I'm wrestling with. I really love the idea that it's a smaller movie. After Infinity War, I want, I was like, all right, Marvel's got to do a couple of small movies now and before they get to something big. But mm -hmm. I was really happy with the idea that it was a small movie and I love the fact that they focused on like one-on-one -on -one action scenes. I thought that was really cool. I thought The Wasp was great. Like, again, this was a good movie but it's not one that I'm going to be like, oh, my God, I, you have to see it. I have to go run and get it on Blu-ray. It was good. And if it's on... Dude, some things could just be like an episode. It doesn't have to be The Dark Knight. It doesn't have to be this epic. Yeah, no, and I totally agree with you on that. Um, that's why I'm trying to be, you know, like balanced with it. Like I'm not going to crap on the movie because there was nothing really I can crap on the movie about. It was nothing I didn't like about it with the exception of the few things I mentioned. But there was nothing I loved about it except yeah. for the heartfelt scenes that he had with his daughter that kind of choked me up. Like in the beginning when the mother finds um, the girl in the closet, they do that little hide and go seek thing. And she's like, Oh my God. And he remembers her and all that. That was kind of like, all right, that got me right in the feels. But other than that, I was kind of like, all right, this is, this is pretty good. It's it's be around, uh, Kev's matrix or a matchbox fun toy placement. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, uh, RC Robin, what did Baz think of it? I loved it. I thought it was entertaining. Oh, what did you like it in in your in your echelon of Marvel movies? What did, what did I you was laughing throughout the whole thing. I, it was action packed. There was no dull spots. The movie didn't slow down. It was great. I don't give a shit. What, you know, enough with these lists. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not asking you to make a list as opposed to like where would you put like? I, obviously, you're not putting it up there with like Winter Soldier or Civil War. I mean, that's ridiculous. Fuck no. But at the same time, it's not like, okay, this is nowhere near the bottom either, you know? So it kind of just fell in the middle for me. So I really don't have anything bad to say about it, which would cause for controversy and, and conversation. I don't have anything that I'm beaming over it about for the same reasons. Uh, well, the, All right, it's not better than the first one, right? No, I don't think it's better than the first one. I think I even like Doctor Strange a little bit more. But mm. I did not like this movie. See, I don't like not like any of the Marvel movies. There was no Marvel movie that I really just didn't like or violently, violently hated. Like even though the Door of the Dark World and like the Hulk, the first Hulk movie, not the Angley Hulk, the other Hulk, the one with Ed Norton, mm -hmm. they're kind of they're at the bottom for me in Marvel. But I still don't hate those movies. I just don't really they don't have a lot of rewatch va rewatch value for me. But if it's on, okay, I'll leave it on if I'm like cooking or something. Okay. Is doing a, uh, I don't see Hot Toys doing a ghost release either there, Kev. Uh, Kev's Matrix. I don't see Hot Toys doing I don't see Hot Toys doing a release on half of this stuff, which I thought was kind of silly because this movie, he only wears this – well, I guess he wears this new outfit that keeps malfunctioning on him a little bit more. I thought he wasn't wearing – he was wearing the old costume. It was kind of a little confusing to me, but anyways. Uh, a little I like that character a lot too, Ghost. What? I like that character a lot, Ghost. Ghost was cool. Yeah. That's okay, here you go. Here's the problem I have with the movie. Ghost was really cool. She was creepy, but she really wasn't a good villain. Like she wasn't villainous. Like there was no real villain in the movie. Who was the villain? Well, am I really to believe that the friggin' guy from uh, from Sons of Anarchy was the villain? What's his face? Uh, Walt Walton Goggins. Even though he was just some kind of crook guy. I love that actor. He's excellent. I love everything he's in too. 
I was, uh, what's that show on HBO, uh, Principles? Oh, Vice Principles is good. Oh, my it's, God. It's so funny. Yeah, that's a good show. Um, I like anything he's in. I'll watch him act whatever. I'll just watch him because he's entertaining. But there was no real villain for me to kind of get behind. I actually like – I wasn't even that big of a fan of Black Panther, and I thought Black Panther was better than this. And I was thinking to myself, like, everyone was over the moon about Michael B. Jordan, although he's another entertaining actor to watch. I didn't really – I don't know. I I, I kind of like. I guess Thanos was just so damn good that I, I got to stop mentally comparing people to to him to that mm. to a CGI character that I thought they put so much time in that movie into that I kind of felt him and I felt for him and the things he was doing. So it is what it is. Anyways, uh, also, also well, like going back to Ghost, uh, it's one it's one of the those times where they have a villain that is doesn't have the same powers as the hero. So it presented a challenge, you know what I mean? Like her powers were phasing, right? Yeah. And the hero's powers were shrinking and enlarging themselves. So that was cool. That that definitely made for great action sequences. Right. And I think that see, I didn't buy her as a villain as much as I bought the guy um, Darren from the last movie, uh, Yellow Jacket. He was villain. He was doing villainous things. He was kind of like just wanted to steal stuff to heal herself. But she was more misunderstood, and she wasn't really even out to kill anybody. She was just like, look, I want to steal this, and I don't care if someone dies in the process. But she wasn't really villainous, like being vil villainy, like literally killing people and robbing people and doing things like that. I don't know. But uh, it, it was cool. Uh, Frank Castle, the dynamic was dope. Uh, Michael B. Jordan was great as Killmonger, R.C. Robin. Yes, he was. Okay, um, Kev's Matrix wrote, uh, do we want to see Hot Toys releases of – Mom and Dad, Ant Man. Um, yes and no. Would I buy them? Probably not. But I think that Michael Douglas and and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer are so awesome that they should get their own characters. I just would want a Michael Douglas in my collection from one of his other movies, maybe Falling Down, like that. When, when I think of Michael Douglas and like crazy roles, I think of him in that. Um, and Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman from from Batman Returns '92 is definitely a long overdue hot toy. But as far as this movie goes, I don't know if. He wasn't even really in it enough to deserve a hot dog. That's my opinion. Uh, oh, you could almost go back and root for ghosts like rooting for Johnny and Cobra Kai Karate Kid TV show. Yes. Yes, I understand that totally because I am Team Johnny. Totally get that. Okay. So are we ready to move on from Ant-Man and the Wasp? Uh, sure. Is there anything else you want to say about that? We will move on otherwise. I'm crossing it out. Okay. Luis was awesome. Uh, <laughs> that whole bit with the, the truth serum was fucking hysterical. That didn't do nothing for me. That to me was like, okay, Mox Brothers again. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, whatever. What the fuck is wrong with your sense of humor? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking uh, populated. Like you got to have falling down breakfast because it's 1030. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Moving on. How about we talk about the shareholders agreeing that Marvel buys Fox? It's official, I think. Right? It's official. Monopoly. I don't care. I want the X-Men in the friggin' Marvel Universe. I want the Fantastic Four and Galactus in the Marvel Universe. And I want toys and action figures. I want to be able to buy an X-Men shirt without Wolverine on it. That's what I'm hyped about. I like that. Yeah. No, you don't care, right? You'd rather just have fucking Days of the Future Past again? <laughs> What do you think they're going to do with those movies? I don't know. I don't. I, I, a lot of people are saying that they want Avengers versus X Men. I think that's the wrong way to go. I think you do an X Men movie or two, and then you have maybe X Men versus Avengers, or you do at least one movie. Like, don't do. I hate to say this. Don't do a pull a DC and a Warner Brothers and have the X Men come in and immediately fight the Avengers. That would be a mistake. Mm -hmm. X-Men, establish who they are. I would make them not kids, but I would make them late teens, and I would do the original team. Stop trying to yes. get the mutants into a movie. Just do the original five, and then in the sequel, with maybe Avengers versus or all that, bring in your Wolverines and your Colossuses and, and, and everybody else. But I am uh, I am pretty, uh, I am all for it. Just take my money. Yep, Frankie Fearless, just take my money, and I'll see Robin. Doom. Yes, Doom! <laughs> Fucking Doom, God damn it, Doctor Doom, the greatest villain in my opinion, right up there with the Joker in in uh, an icon, um, uh, iconic uh, comic villains. 
hopefully we can get a real fucking Doctor Doom finally. Maybe. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to recapture the magic of last week. Just do it. Just say how you feel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was talking about that with uh, somebody um, the other day about how, like, uh, there's, was it Rise of the Silver Surfer? Yeah. Wasn't that bad. It's just that they fucked up Galactus. Yeah. By I'm, shrouding him in that cloud. I, I'm, it was decent. Like, I, that's why I like Marvel. They're not afraid to put a guy in a big purple suit with horns coming out of his head. I'm oh, cool. Yeah. You know, you know if you get like if you do a Fantastic Four reboot and you do it in the style of Thor Ragnarok, where it's like um, I'm not talking about slapstick comedy, but make it a family movie, but give it that Kirby dots esque type design style. Mm. Sold, bro. Sold for days. How could you not want a Kirby type style Fantastic Four movie? It's crazy. Uh. And yeah, I mean, you could bring the surfer in, and all. we we know all the characters that can come into all this. But I'll tell you, um, I am very happy about this uh, because I like the idea that it's, see, to me, it's not Disney getting a monopoly. It's the fact that Marvel's just getting their characters back, which is what I've been wanting for the longest time. A lot of us have. Oh, yeah. All for it. Get everybody under the same umbrella, so you can actually make movies with all of your characters. And this comes at a great time for them, I considering just, the fact that all these other actors are now leaving. I just worry about just like Disney totally monopolizing the whole entire super movie scene. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel that too. I think that if um, if Universal, can I see Universal try doing that with the Universal Monsters. They need to, Universal could come out with the Universal Monsters again. I hate to ask them to re-reboot it again, but do them as smaller movies. Mm -hmm. like, I want a Universal Monsters movie. Not to segue for a second, but I would want a like Dracula or a Mummy movie in the style of Ant-Man 2 and that it's a small movie. Not everything has to be the end of the world with the mummy taking buildings down. Like make, a, make four or five small movies and then put them together and make your big movie. I'd be all for that and that would give Universal a leg to stand on by actually producing a good movie for once. Um, and then you still have DC, hopefully. I'm, I still have hope for them because I, you know, I, you know, I love Man of Steel. I love parts of Batman vs. I, I kind of like Batman vs. Superman. Uh, I like parts of Justice League. So I think that Aquaman looks great. We discussed this last week. Uh, I discussed recently with uh, Mr. Frank uh, Castle. He wasn't too crazy about the Shazam trailer. We didn't talk about the Shazam trailer, and we didn't even have that in our notes. Uh, you want to talk about that real quick? Oh, uh, we didn't talk about it? Oh, no, that's we didn't talk about it all last week. Okay. Well, we talked about Aquaman. We talked about Aquaman, yes. Yeah. Okay. So what you think? Take the floor, bro. Uh, okay, so obviously it's uh, adapted from Jeff Johns's version of the uh, character. Yes. Uh, did you did you read any of that? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. So I'm cool with that. I love Jeff Johns. Um, I I don't know. I liked it. I'm hopeful I it too. I wasn't blown away by it, but I liked the tone. Uh, the costume I think still needs a little bit of work. Um, I want to see the lightning bolt actually hit the kid and him turn into Shazam. I think that would look cooler. I'm trying to get all the negatives out of the way because I could talk about the positives for days because I like the idea that they're playing the kid tone, not the little kid tone up, but like the fact that he's still like, wow, I'm in awe of my powers. This is great because I think he's going to mature at some point during the movie, maybe for the end or possibly for the sequel maybe. Like maybe this will be just getting his feet wet. Oh, his his balls will drop, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my my better half just decided to show up. Um, but there's, there's, there's two ways to betray Captain Marvel. Um, some people see him when he turns from Billy Batson into Captain Marvel or say Shazam, that he becomes an adult. So he doesn't talk like an adult, or he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't talk like a child, or he doesn't act like a child. Right. But there's another version that they've done where he actually retains his childhood-like consciousness when he transforms. Yeah. So uh, they're going with that latter version. Yeah. No, that's and I'm I'm fine with that too. I'd like to see what I'm, I'm glad they're going with that version for the simple reason that if this is taking place during the uh, the worlds of worlds, whatever the worlds of DC or whatever it's called now, the DCEU, 
I like the idea that they're introducing characters that are different than their other characters. The problem that I had with Batman versus Superman, although I liked it, was the dark Superman. I feel like this Shazam has got the lighthearted tone that I wish Man of Steel had. Not goofiness of it, though. I'm like a little bit lighter so that you can see the dynamics between Batman, the light and dark with Batman and Superman. The fact that they're giving a different personality with Aquaman and now a different personality with Shazam is that when we actually see them together, we'll see them be able to work off of each other, which is why I liked certain parts of Justice League in that I liked watching the characters just talk to each other because I felt like characters with different personalities were actually interacting as opposed to watching two guys with chips on their shoulder just argue over whatever that we saw in Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. Uh, the outfit in his voice sucks. Uh, the Kingdom Come story, Shazam versus Soup is an epic story. Yes, it is. It's probably the, my favorite soup, uh, Shazam story. Uh, okay, study the outfit. I kind of uh, it kind of harkens back to maybe even Christopher Reeves' kind of suit. Uh, so I think that's a stylistic choice, and is where they're they're kind of saying like, okay, we're going to towards a more traditional, lighthearted style. I read, which is great, I read that uh, somebody on one of the pages, I forgot which one, claimed to have read the script for this movie and said that, uh, like, he like was, like, in on making the movie or, like, a, a production assist or simply somebody involved in making this movie and, he like, read the script and said that everything that they showed in the trailers was all the kitty stuff to try to grab, like, parents going, oh, look, DC is not full of, like, murderers anymore. Okay. The movie actually takes a very serious tone from like the three quarter part to the end, and um, I'm guessing like the first maybe 20 minutes of the movie, 15 minutes is going to be him before he gets the powers, and then we're going to get a whole chunk of the movie in the middle where he's like goofing off as Shazam, mm. where maybe he meets the villain and has to kind of mature into that wisdom of Sol Solomon role. I think that's a good kind of. You know, way to go. Also, by the way, people that are watching, if we don't happen to catch your comment, you guys can talk amongst each other too. We'll try, I'm trying to keep my eye on that and that. What? How many people are around? Uh, we got six viewers with us. We had seven or eight at one point. We got six uh, right now. Okay, so we spoke about. We got. Uh, so we have to add those six viewers into the uh, the raffle for the uh, the what you call the print. Oh, yes, we are, uh, for those that haven't even seen this, uh, we are doing a raffle. You know what you tell them? Yeah, we're doing a raffle for uh, two, I, I believe it's 11 by 16 prints for uh, Age of Ultron, uh, Avengers poster, and a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 poster. Nice, you have the posters on your show? So you, you choose which one you want. I'll, I'll get them in a second. All right, cool. There's someone in here. Got a comment. Um, I don't know if the, the chat's going to pick up the random comment gen generator when we do do that. So if you can, after the video goes, uh, stops live, go back after it prints and just type a comment if you can. Because I don't know if it works with the uh, the actual live chat or if it has to be a comment under the actual yeah. video. Find those posters. Um, okay, let me cross off the shareholders and the, the Marvel thing. Yeah. Anybody, anybody in the group want to make a comment about Marvel? Uh, if this is in the Guardians of the Galaxy poster. Okay. Uh, somebody asked about Dwayne Rock if he's supposed to be Black Adam still. Yes. For like 100 years, he's been cast as, as friggin' Black Adam. He was cast when they cast Cavill as Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. I know I've been waiting for that too, but you're not going to get him in this movie. You know, it's funny. I was uh, uh, under um, I was un under something looking and, and talking about the Shazam movie, and somebody wrote, uh, "Who is this this weird bald headed guy? Like uh, some stupid generic guy uh, as bad guy?" And I was like, uh, "Doctor Savannah? Like question mark? Like generic bad guy? Apparently, no one, not a lot of people know about Shazam, so people shouldn't just comment that don't know." Just go look into it and then make your comment. Um, anything else on Shazam? People have to have opinions about shit they don't even know about. Yeah, I know. I do it too sometimes. But I, if I do it, it's usually just to stir the pot. But that's why we have Tony Stark out here to let you know that Marvel has bought Fox. And that's why I put um, Tony Stark out here pointing to the stars because hopefully Sometime in the future, we'll get some cool uh, one-sixth figures or anything else from these movies. All right. I want to just uh, drop a quick little in the bucket. 
Uh, I want to say that Office Max is now going to be selling toys in the wake of Toys R Us. Now that Toys what? R Us is defunct, Office Max, which we have an Office Max in the neighborhood, so is like picking printer up printer paper. Printer paper. Bigger. Get yourself some 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 office supplies, and then go to the aisle that has the Black Series and the Marvel Legends. So it seems like um, when it, we're going to be getting. Uh, yeah, we're going to be getting another place to get our toys from. So I'll add Office Max to the list. And Walgreens is, I've heard, taking up a big kind of hefty weight in, in this game. So for those of you that want to do your little runs, the best places to do your little action figure hunts now is it either a Walgreens, in my opinion, or if you have a Super Walmart, we don't, or check out Office Max in the coming months. You can go there and ask about them. They probably got the SKUs in the back. Everybody's going to want to drop at Office Max. They just feel the good figures and put them on eBay. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Such is life. Okay. Uh, so, these are the prints. Yeah, show the prints. Yeah, this is the Guardians. And this is the Age of Ultron. That Ultron print is pretty fire, personally. I think Guardians prints is nice, but that Ultron print is straight fire. So somebody's going to win all of them. Um... Okay, so other than the Office Max news, I want to also say that Mezco Sovereign Mezco One Twelve Collective Sovereign Knight Batman was uh, Sovereign Knight is the second one in their series of three Mezco figures. They already released the Ascending Knight, which I had on a few episodes ago. You guys can go back out and check out my review on the Ascending Knight Batman. The Sovereign Knight Batman, which looks to be more of like a, a with the short ears, is like a hush style, and with the long ears, he kind of looks a little bit more. Um, Especially the PX exclusive, which is what we're talking about here, looks a lot like uh, uh, like a Jim, like their version of a Jim Aparo with the long ears and with the short ears. He looks more of like a Jim Lee figure, and he is now sold out on Big Bad Toy Store, which is the one of the biggest in online toy stores there is. So if you want to get yourself a Sovereign Knight PX exclusive Batman, which is the bl dark blue and gray, they're not doing light blue this time. It's actually navy blue and gray with the uh, oval on his chest with the yellow in it. You better figure out a way to get it because that figure is bound to go up, up, up big time because everybody that missed out on the last one is now uh, jonesing for this one, especially because it's the, the blue, like a darker blue and gray version with the yellow oval. But he sold out on Big Bad Toy Store, so get off your butts if you want a Mezco 112 Sovereign Knight Batman. Okay, I want to show you some, uh, what you call it, uh, customs I'm working on. Show me. Okay, so we got, this is uh, <laughs> Wedgie Pick Leia. Nice, how'd you do it? Uh, magic. <laughs> and we have, we have Rasta, Jessica Jones. <laughs> you gotta talk so that they can see it. You gotta talk. There you go. Yeah, I'm on. Okay, so. No customs. They're a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Those are the two customs. Would you take the dress off of Leia? Yeah, that's, I just stripped the bitch. That was the, that was the Black Series, right? Yeah. That's cool. You probably got a, a, a good shot of Kit Bash and a, a, a better um, Slave Leia. Now that Disney's not going to be doing any of those anymore. When I have uh, coming out, Luke. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to be free. Coming out, Luke. Free to be free. Is that original poster, Luke, where he's like ripped like Schwarzenegger all of a sudden? <laughs> That's uh, the land speeder, Luke. Yeah. The land speeder. That movie poster where he has like a six pack and bursting biceps. I just picked this up. This is the, the best version of Luke in, uh, in six inch form. The. Uh, SH figures. She needs a shot of antibiotics, he writes. Oh my god. <laughs> he's a shot of antibiotics. How's the SH figure arts Luke? Oh, he's awesome. Great. Give me a quick uh, rundown of that figure. Give me like a quick got the, got the ankle rockers that everyone loves. There you go. Now these are very uh, the articulation is great on these things. Beautiful. Lift them up so we can see it. There you go. I need to be free. Joints, ratchet joints. There you guys go. Wait. Nice. So. Holds his poses. They're, they're ratchet joints. I don't know. I don't know what that is. 
He's doing YMCA. All right. Uh, we have a few things here. I, uh, Robin says into the Spider-Verse cartoon. I haven't seen anything for that yet, so I guess I don't have to look into that. Pavel says, I hope they just ruin Shazam. I don't know why you would want that because a rising. Fuck you, Fuck you Pavel. Uh, are you getting Molecule H. Willy Wonka before uh, he definitely – he'll be sought after? Yeah, I was kind of debating on that. I do want a um, – uh, oh, what's not his name? Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. What's coming out? <laughs> they make Molecule 8, the company that just did uh, – they just did a John Lennon figure that was like delayed for like three years that they took everybody's – this is the problem with Molecule 8. They took everybody's payments in full of like $250 for this John Lennon figure and then delayed the figure like a year and a half. But with giving like these like bullshit like updates, the figure eventually did come out and it was a good figure. But that's a really long time to wait with somebody taking your money up front. But that Willy Wonka figure does look like it might be they make it a, Willy Wonka? A, a winner. Yeah, they with two head sculpts and all that. Oh. Yeah, so candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. Uh, also, it says let's see. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, you can Willy Wonka. Okay, see the trailer for Spider Man Spider Verse looks very cool. I got to see that. Make it a topic for next week. Yes, definitely will. Yeah. Um, I missed a couple of the other t t comments. Somebody else mentioned the oldest university of the Infinity Gems. Tony Stark kicked my shirt. Okay, cool. We're all caught up with that. With them then. Okay, delayed. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. The freaking you know the ridiculous amount of delays. No, they might sell on special effect and a good script. That's what I mean. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Well, I hope they, they hope it's a better script. Exactly. Uh, yes, yeah, be bad toy store for the pre-order. All right. So, Yo, a big bad. We were saying the other day. Uh, they take really long with their fucking pre-orders, man. They do. They do. It seems like they're the – they should be the second to Sideshow. Like, as far as – like, because they carry – like, again, I do a lot of the Mezcos and the Hot Toys. But it's like Sideshow will get them in, then they ship them to Big Bad Toy Store, which is, like, the number two of, like, high-end distributors in America. So you have, like, your side – you know, Hot Toys is over there across the seas. They ship in on the shipping containers. It goes to Sideshow. Then Sideshow ships them everywhere else. Big Bad Toy Store, though, seems like they're getting their stuff late, and it seems like people that order directly from Sideshow, they're shipping all their stuff out first. Mm -hmm. and they're waiting for the next shipment to come in to ship out to places like uh, Time Walker Toys and Big Bad Toy Store and places like that. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of the Venom movie? Okay, yeah, we haven't even spoken about that. I didn't even have that on the list for this week. What do you think of what Venom looks like? Because I think... Uh, I love Tom Hardy, so hopefully... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm hopeful, too. I just, I don't like the, I, again, Tom Hardy's awesome, so he's going to be awesome. But for me to want to go see a movie about Venom, I need more than just Tom Hardy in it. Like, I, I, to how me, about, I need how, about Venom? how about Venom? You have Venom and Tom Hardy. That's not Venom. How do you have Venom and a spider on his chest without him ever being on Spider-Man? I don't know. You're going to see, right? You're going to fucking see. Yeah, we're going to see, all right. <laughs> we got to fucking see. <laughs> the problem is that they should have did Homecoming too, and had him get the fucking symbiote suit and that, and then have it go off and then do your fucking Venom movie. This is why I want Marvel to fucking own everything. Tom Hardy's resting on his laurels. Uh, I was hoping for Spidey, but no Spidey. Well, yeah, exactly. What do you think about all the hate with the CGI and the Aquaman trailer? Do you think it's understandable or just people hating? It's just people hating, and I also think that... You're going to make an underwater world without CGI. Well, and they're just they're saying it's like, oh, you know, it doesn't look good enough. And everybody bitched about the Black Panther CGI, and I didn't even think that that was bad. Everybody has these really ridiculously high expectations for CGI because some, just some movies can really hit that level, but not every movie's going to hit that level. Um... Uh, but, but Use your imagination, folks. That's what we did growing up. Yeah. We didn't have no CGI. Everybody needs to go back and watch uh, the original uh, uh, Clash of the Titans movie from the fucking they late 70s. They need to 70s. do like, the real good costumes from the original Star Wars trilogy and just have a bubble machine. Off to the side, <laughs> making like, underwater bubbles. Yeah, this is the... You guys wanted real. <laughs> Look, it's so real and authentic. <laughs> it's just the <laughs> bubble machine off camera. Um. Uh, yeah, so I think Aquaman looks fine. I think they're going to refine it a little bit more, and the movie will be good. Just everyone wants to hate on DC for some reason. See, the reason why everyone should be hoping, even Marvel fans, for DC to do great is that Marvel will eventually have to do better. See, that's how these things work. Yeah. Uh, wrestling, for those of you that watched wrestling back in the late 90s, from like 97 to 2001, 
wrestling was amazing. WWE wrestling was amazing because we had the Monday Night Wars between Nitro and WWE, and they were always trying to outdo each other. Then when the, uh, the Invasion storyline happened, which I also happened to like, it kind of went downhill from there. They separated the shows, and the WWE was able to wrestle on their laurels and do nothing because there was no competition, which yeah. has sucked for like 17 years now. So you want everyone to succeed and do great so that people start going, nah, DC is better. A whole millions of people screaming that DC is better so that Marvel goes, oh, no, we're the original kings of this, and then come out with something even more awesome. Uh, bring yeah. back these. <laughs> um, so down for Aquaman. Hells yeah. And they picked the perfect person to play him. I think he would have been a cooler. I like him as Aquaman, but I think he would have been a really awesome Lobo. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But then again, oh, I think yeah. that everything that he does is pretty much awesome. Like he's kind of slowly. Like Tom Hardy. He's slowly going into the Tom Hardy, I can do no wrong category. Whereas I pretty much like him in everything I've ever seen him in. And then eventually they'll ascend to Woody Harrelson's status. Oh, yeah. Well, then it's like, oh, well, Woody Harrelson was in it. So that, that had to be good. <laughs> yeah, that's the old one. Um, okay. Let's keep it moving along and talk about, since we're on the Marvel kick, I want to talk very briefly about Spider-Man Homecoming Part 2, Far From Home. And the fact that they're supposedly making Gwen Stacy a French foreign exchange student. I know some people aren't going to have a problem with this, but the, where my inner kind of mm, grinds my gears a little bit is the we're just going to change characters for no reason. You know, everybody now has to be, I, I get it, multiculturalism and all that. I'm all for it. But French with dark hair, foreign exchange student, I don't know. I kind of... Really, I'm holding on to the golden age where it was like the Betty and Veronica, the blonde and the brunette or the, the redhead, like kind of bickering over Peter and all that. I, that's like when my mind goes immediately when I think of that. So maybe it's just something I'm going to have to get over. Yeah, these stories, they evolve, man. Those stories were told that they have their era. That's it. You got to move on. No, I just feel like we never got our era. Like we got it in the comics. We did. We did the, 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 the McGuire uh, trilogy. Yeah, I guess. I know what's our face played a pretty decent Gwen Stacy, I guess. But that that movie was just all kind of like the all three of those movies were just they were good, but they were just like okay, this is what we had for like two thousand and two. This is. I mean, just look at like say just say Greek mythology. You know, like there's there's never one like solid story to each say god or character. Even their stories were were evolving throughout the centuries. You know what I mean? That's a good one to look at, and I never looked at it like that before. So, I yeah, okay, you, you pretty much kind of talked me back from the ledge on that one. There's no, like, said canon for any of this stuff. See, Mike B. just wrote, are you serious? Gwen Stacy is a Brit geez. Well, yeah, well, she's going to be French in the movie. So, uh, yeah. sorry, I hated the Conan re reboot. I hated it, too, but I liked Jason Momoa in it. He was good. Didn't like the movie. You look French, dude, Gwen Stacy. I mean, I can see her being French. Well, yeah, but she's in the, I don't know, uh, whatever, man, I guess. Hey, Mary Jane. You're French and African, then that's uh, it's a different story, right? I don't, the only thing that I, I would, I would um, I'm going to come back at Kev's comment with the uh, Mary, uh, Aunt May is old, not hot. Uh, I love Marissa Tomei. She's like, awesome. No, the wrestler, dude. The wrestler. Go watch the friggin' wrestler. Well, I got to say. Oh, I had no problem with them changing her character because she saw her tits in the wrestler. We're never going to get any views on this between all the cursing and well, colorful language. That's okay. Oh, why? You told me it wasn't for kids. It isn't for kids. Whatever. I just That's another thing I wrestle with. Anyways. Well, since um, you saw her delicate derriere in the wrestler and you loved it, I guess it was okay for her not to be an old lady. Uh, bring us Craven <laughs> the Hunter killing uh, with the Spider-Man story. Yes, that would be awesome because that's a villain we haven't gotten yet and that would be great. We should do Marvel versus DC movie crossover. That's never going to happen. Uh, we might be in our 70s by the time that happens. Uh, thank you, amazing actress. Yes, she is. Uh, did you see did you think reason to see the Teen Titans Go movie yet? Well, I went to go see Ant-Man today so that I could do this live video. And Grayson and Miss Bell and our other uh, and our daughter went to go see uh, Teen Titans Go. And they said it was? Really, really, really good. Really, really, really good. And really, really, really fun. I was really shocked because I didn't go into it with any hope because I don't really watch the show so much. Now the kids want to watch the show. I exactly. Now, the if they saw the movie, now they want to watch it. So really I've never watched funny. the show either, so I don't know, but I heard it was really fun. I love that version of Beast Boy, man. 
The Who? I love Beast Boy. Sorry. I've never really seen it. I know that Will Arnett plays Deathstroke. When I found that out, I was like, okay, it's I'm seeing fun, this. It's fun, and it's funny. You know, and he's also funny, a producer on the movie. A lot of funny jokes for adults to get. Okay, cool. Yeah, I so I got, I'll probably wind up catching it on the fire stick. I don't know if I'm going to go to the movies because he, little man, already saw it. He's like, do you want me to ruin it for you? I was like, don't ruin it for me. We'll okay. catch it. We'll catch it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Uh, Teen Titans Go. We talked about, uh, okay, let me cross this off. Gwen Stacy being French, and you pretty much convinced me otherwise. All right. Star Wars Episode Nine: The Return of Princess Leia. This is not going to be a discussion about The Last Jedi. However, hearing this news, what do you think? Oh, they have to do something. Yes. And I'm glad it's to, uh, if, uh, I don't know how they're going to work it. but They're supposedly taking scenes from, uh, un like, filmed scenes from the last, um, I guess uh, they said from The Force Awakens, but I'm guessing it's going to be filmed scenes from the last two movies and kind of doing what they can with it. And and giving her her proper send off. They're not killing her off screen. They're not killing her in the opening crawl, which I thought they were going to do. And uh, or just say that she's off in space somewhere. That would be kind of like, you know, whatever. So it's if they 2018. Could, they don't have to do that. Well, they're not going to do a CGI version of her either, which is I'm glad. They're not just yeah, going to no. put a CGI stand in like they did with Rogue One with um, Peter Cushing. As Wait, dude, dude, when you, uh, you sent me uh, a, a message in Messenger. To, you know, it was the show notes of what we were going to talk about. And I thought it read episode nine, Leia is black. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, they changed. <laughs> they cast a black actress as Leia. I was like, this is next level PC. <laughs> next thing you know, she'll be French. Next thing you know, she'll be French. Leia is French. <laughs> what is the world coming to? So, yeah, I was like, Leia is back. Mark Hamill is back, probably as a force ghost. He's definitely signed on. And what's his face? It's definitely in the movie. Cole 45. <laughs> Cole 45 is back. And uh, we'll have force ghost Luke, most likely. Uh, let's see. Uh, body double. Uh, Lando's back. Yes, he is. Are you getting – am I getting the Hot Toys death stroke? No, I'm not because I don't do video games. I, I'm very, very, very choosy about my Hot Toys. And I'm trying to be as – as choosy as possible because I'm running out of shelf space. The next Hot Toys on my docket is the Justice League Superman to go with my um, the Batman that I have from the Batman Superman movie. I'm getting Neo from The Matrix because that was a must-have. And I'm getting Gimli from Asmus Lord of the Rings to, um, to, to add to my fellowship. Those are my next one like six figures. Do you like how it looks anyway? How, what, how, who looks? The Deathstroke, oh yeah, the Deathstroke looks amazing. I, but everything they do looks amazing. I got to say this on every video. Everything Hot Toys does looks outrageous and amazing. That figure to me looks like five cups. It looks great. It's just that I don't have room for him in my collection. I really don't want him to buy another cabinet. So yeah, Deathstroke and Hot Toys? What? The, uh, Hot Toys is doing, they're do, they've are they been doing a line of uh, Batman, uh, Arkham uh, Knight. Oh, okay. So they're doing like the, the like they have the Joker from that, and they have Batman. Now they're doing uh, Deathstroke from the last game, and he looks fantastic. I mean, he really looks crazy good. But I just don't have room for. I got to be super freaking picky with my stuff. Uh, cool side of the pillow, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Will Lando die? Uh, yeah. I don't. I I hope not. I hope that they choose to. Now obviously, you know, Princess Leia is either going to die or not, or they'll just kind of write her off into the sunset. But I hope they don't kill off every single old character. It would be nice to know that at least one of them kind of just lived off their days in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, stop ruining the old characters, please. Let's, this is, we're not doing this. I'm not doing this. They ruined my boy right here, Luke. Yeah, all right. And I'm, uh, stop, 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 stop. Last Jedi was heresy. Oh God, we're gonna have to do like a. Uh, this is gonna, we're gonna do like a You're Fight Club video, a Last, Jedi, a Last Jedi review from fucking eight months ago. Here's uh, S. H. Figuarts, Henry Cavill. Nice. How's that figure? How's he compared to the Luke? Give a breakdown on him. Uh, dude, I, I don't, I don't uh, review figures like you. I'm just like, here, look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but do you like him when you put him on your shelf when you open them up? Are you happy? A very happy. It was a happy boy. All right, it was a happy boy. Happy purchase. Happy purchase. Oh, and by the way, so I, as I told you, I'm moving to Miami soon, next month. Nice. And 
I I was making. Uh, it took me like three days to catalog all my uh, my comics collection because I want to uh, kind of lighten my load and just like uh, get rid of some of it. So I cataloged like two thousand comics in three days. That's nuts. But this is some of the stuff I'm keeping for my personal collection. I just want to show you for some eye candy. Uh, this is Star Lord. His first, first appearance uh, in uh, comics. He first appeared in, in a Marvel magazine, though. But this is his first appearance in a comic. Nice. Okay, we got Deadpool number one, written by boy Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly's awesome. Which is basically the you know, the character you see in the movies is what he created. Yeah, he's got. They got to kind of bring him in as like a third creator. You got like Fabian Nicenza. Rob Liefeld, and now they gotta kind of add him to the, you know, the pantheon of. Yeah, Kelly created his, yeah, his, his personality. Yeah. Uh, number one, number ten. Nice. What makes you want to keep that one? Uh, he's an excellent artist. He's. Uh, That's Turner, right? Yeah, Turner. Unfortunately, he's 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 not around anymore. Yeah, I know. He was. Uh, Suicide Squad. Uh, yeah. Uh, exclusive Bill Tucci, uh, uh, signed. Nice. My uh, boy Bill. Uh, the class nice. cover. That's that's an amazing cover. Right. So. You're only keeping that and getting rid of everything else, or are those just ones you wanted to show? The, I got some other stuff. I, I kept about around 200 out of the 2,000. What are you doing with the rest? The rest I'm selling to a comic book store. Nice. Okay, so this is the first full appearance of Ego, the Living Planet. Nice. So. Who's on that? Who's the artist? Uh, who do you think? Oh, well, the king. And we got um, Spider Man, signed by uh, John Romita Jr. Uh, what's his name? Campbell is the artist. Jay Scott Campbell, nice. Mm -hmm. we have, what do we think of uh, uh, Miss Good, Old McFarlane, Spidey Spawn? What do you think of Jamie Foxx's Spawn? Uh, it's pretty cool. Jamie Foxx is a good actor. I'm just not a Spawn fan. So that'll get me another five on unli uh, unlikes. I like Spawn. Uh, I don't really like Jamie Foxx too much, but uh, I do acknowledge that he's a good actor. He's talented. So I'm hopeful. Is that number one? Number one, wanted. Nice. I love I love that movie. Uh, this is a Doom Patrol uh, number one comic. I just really like the, the weird cover. You know, that's cool. back when covers were actually covers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a very expensive comic. It's going for a lot right now. You should find. Yeah, look at that. First dead pool. Oh, I need to get that CGC pal. Yes, I do before I run it. You know, and then buy yourself a fucking car with it. <laughs> then we got Days of Future Past. Nice. That's good. Um, we got his name is Bishop. First appearance of Bishop. Very cool. Um, 300, number one. Very cool. Also a favorite series of mine. Yeah, I really have a Frank inspiring on all some of this. Uh, first appearance of Rogue. And we will end it with Spawn. Wow, look at that. Spawn 100. Uh, cool. Covered by Mike Mignola. That's Mike Mignola? Yeah. Am I signed? Uh, not signed, no. All right, I was understanding. I've, I've been, my voice has been cracking lately. I don't know if I'm going through like middle age puberty or something. <laughs> collection of comics here, word. Ha ha. Uh, I've been cracking like Preeta Brady all over the, the last few videos. Um, very cool. So, um, hey, good luck with selling those comics, and I feel bad for your collection, but I'm sure they're going to find themselves in a nice new home. It's also like I'm, going to, I'm moving to Miami, so like, you know, what if there's a giant hurricane and shit, you know? Uh, that's, that's... It's not the best place to bring comics, also because of the humidity. You're going to have to get yourself like three dehumidifiers and all kinds of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to kind of purge my collection, make it more manageable. 
Yeah, that's cool. And that happens. So I do that shit with the hot toys and the Mezcos and all that other stuff. I guess we all do. I mean, some people don't, and then you see their collections, and it's like, wow, that's a really stunning collection of just piles of plastic. Who's that's how I see it. Shit. And who the hell is dusting that shit? And I'm like, oh, I'll do it once a year, and it takes me a month. And my reading habits are such that, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm not reading actual books anymore. I'm just online or like using my tablet. So, yeah. yeah. Like Spawn to voice. I don't know what that means. Like Spawn to voice. You mean Jamie Fox's voice as Spawn? I'm sure they'll put some kind of flange on it or, or CG voice or some nonsense. I just saw something on my Facebook pop up. Yeah. And it says, my generation didn't need CGI. We had Luke Ferrigno. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that. but, you know, try watching that series now, man. It's boring as fuck. <laughs> Good luck in Miami. Thanks to technology. We can still see you on Saturday night no matter where you are. RC Robin. And like the Precia t-shirt. You got a thumbs up on that. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, you guys need to be watching Preacher, man. It's great. No, I've been hearing good things about that series as well. I haven't seen it yet. Batman the Animated Series on Blu-ray. They re uh, announced this week that they're going to be releasing, Warner Brothers is releasing Batman the Animated Series in a giant Blu-ray box set that comes with three Funko Pops and, like, an art book and all kinds of other stuff. It's every episode plus the Mask of the Phantasm and the, uh, the sub Batman Sub-Zero movie from that same era. And my, it, oh, as amazing as it looks and as much as I want to buy it, I had myself going, uh, is that necessary or smart, especially with the, um, the, uh, this new streaming service that's going to be coming out with one of our, I pre-ordered that shit. Yeah. So you got the streaming service. You're going to be able to get all these things and that's included in the streaming service. And they actually went back and remastered all of them too. So mm -hmm. I've tried to watch a couple of episodes of Batman, the animated series on what seems like. 1080p, but it's not. It's just upscaled from whatever it was back in the day on the computer, uh, on the TV. And it was kind of grainy looking, but they said they went back and pretty much scrubbed all the original episodes. These are all going to be like souped up and nice looking. But you're getting it on the streaming service anyway, so I don't know what... I don't know. I can't see anybody going out and buying that, especially since the streaming service is out. And what I can see happening is that that's going to become cheap very fast. So while it may release at like $150 price point, I could see get, getting that at like 70 60, 70 bucks within a matter of six months. Yeah. Don't slice that shit on Amazon. Uh, no, said so the air con condition, it can crack your voice. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I know we got central air in here, so that's probably why my voice is cracking. And plus, uh, I had my little I, – I stole my, my wife's Wonder Woman mug to have some coffee, and I don't have I any water, and I've been talking for just about it. R.C. Robin says, Blu-ray's days are numbered. Going to the graveyard soon with cassette tapes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I remember arguing with you when you were buying Blu-rays and we were getting rid of DVDs. Exactly. It is what it is. It's, I like having the Blu-rays just because I like having things in my hand, but I've been recently just buying things on Voodoo and movies anywhere just so I can watch them anywhere at any time. You know? I just, I don't know. I, I guess that's that where we're going. Like I, own I know. I feel like just owning it in the ether doesn't, I don't really doesn't have it. Doesn't mean owners. you really have it. Yeah, I don't have it. Maybe they can know? take it from you. Yeah, well, if the company goes defunct or if somebody buys out Voodoo, like let's say another company comes along and buys out Voodoo, and now they're like, guess what? All your movies are now defunct, and you got to rebuy them again. That's like we just switched from Verizon to Optimum, and all our freaking points just went down the shit. Exactly. You know, could you imagine like Disney turning around and buying Voodoo and being like, okay, now we own that too, and now all your movies are defunct? Ideas, off? man. What? We'll give them any ideas. Yeah, exactly. They'll the one of doing that too. Uh, we own you. Unless love it, we all stream it. Yeah. Sure. So I wanted to mention that so you can check that out because it's a really nice set anyway. And if you're into Funko Pops, I guess it's pretty cool, especially if they're exclusive to that set. That would make the set worthwhile for those that like Funko Pops. If they actually had three pops that were exclusive just to that set, that would be a smart move because there's a ton of people that apparently like these Funkos. All right. Huge. Uh, yeah, I know they're freaking huge. I want to talk uh, real quick about what was your favorite Marvel Legend of San Diego Comic Con reveal. Oh, Marvel Legends! Shit, I would. I really like the new Kingpin, man. Oh, that's, speaking of which, that made my number one. The my number one pick for new Marvel Legend was the Kingpin. To me, he looked the coolest and the most unique. And I think it's about time we got a updated version of Kingpin. And yeah, there was only that one from like the, the Face Off two packs. Yeah, it was it? It was you either had that one or you didn't have a Kingpin. Yeah. yeah. 
that's going back to like when KB Toys was around. So you're going back over ten years. Yeah. yeah. So uh, all right, so Kingpin wins for both of us. Yay! We both agree on something. That's awesome. I even like I like Silver Sable, and I I can give two shits about the character. And uh, who else? Uh, Black Cat looked pretty good. I didn't see either one of those. I saw. I thought Blink looked good. Oh, Blink looked great. Yeah. Look good. I liked Blink. Professor X from the cartoon. I like the idea that they're doing. Finally, that. we need Professor X, man. Professor X in that outfit, which is cool, and uh. Get the I, Cerebro helmet, too. Yeah, he comes with the helmet. That's good, Cerebro. I just saw that they're doing Reaver figures, and I thought that was really freaking cool because I always thought the Reavers were awesome characters. Mm -hmm. uh, Kingpin next month in 1-6 Toys era. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see if they release a Kingpin. That would be nice for the uh, for the Hot Toys. Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, what the hell is the actor's name? Oh, I can't get actor's name. This is an as Kingpin in 1-6 scale. That would be pretty cool. Uh, so, okay. Uh, for those of you that are watching now, uh, before we start... Wait, this hold on, hold on one second. If, if, if any one of us get him, we have to put him in front of a white wall. <laughs> Remember how, like, he's introduced in, on the show? Yeah. He's, like, standing in front of that white wall, like, just, like, like a psycho. All right, we got... Hold on. Yes, that's that would be cool. And now we got two questions in a row. Uh, Robin asked... You know what sequel was disappointing? Deadpool 2, which I haven't seen. Oh, okay. You don't even like Deadpool that much. Right, so I have no stake in this because I didn't even really yeah. like the first one that much. All right, can I, get, can I give you a spoiler? Because you don't give a shit. Pretty much. I kind of know who, who's in the movie. I know that... Oh, Juggernaut's there, right? Yeah, I know it's Juggernaut's It's old enough in it. to spoil, right? Yeah, it's kind of old enough to spoil at this point. So I heard Juggernaut's in it. I heard that that scene was really cool. But I heard there was just a couple of cool scenes in it, but nothing great. It wasn't really that great of a movie. Cable, man, there wasn't that much depth to Cable. Cable, but um, the jug there was a Juggernaut Colossus fight, which was really good. Oh, nice! That's pretty cool. And there's uh, there's one part where Juggernaut rips uh, Deadpool in half, kind of like what the Hulk did to uh, Wolverine. And for real? Yeah. You know, Oh, well, we got a bunch of them that are like, nah, Deadpool 2 sucked, Deadpool 2 sucked. Okay, what the hell? Watch it all. Free. Domino was dope. The new Domino was awesome. That's cool. Uh, X-Force was kind of like a joke. Yeah, I heard it was like a... Uh, like they were trolling the audience with yeah. that. So maybe that's why people got pissed off with that shit, too. Uh, Pavel writes, what do, you, what do you guys think about Alex Roth, Alex Ross, Earth X as a movie? That's such an underrated story. Yeah, you lent that to me years ago, and it was. I really wish Alex Rush just did the whole comic the way he did Kingdom Come, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to work as a movie. I think that that needs to be like, like two or three movies, man. That's how in depth it is. They would have to cut a ton of that out, and there's just so much of that that of, of awesome in that that I don't know if they could ever do it as a movie. If they did do it as a movie, it would probably have to be like a, a small, narrow focus on maybe one or two of the characters. Yeah, uh, I, I loved how they uh, they tied in the uh, Eternals. Uh, not the Eternals. I'm sorry, uh, the Celestials. Yeah, and uh, wasn't it like um, was it Earth or the Moon where uh, they seeded like their their offspring? They they went from they just seeded offspring on different planets, and there was a Celestial living in Earth. In Earth, Earth was like their 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 womb or something, right, for their offspring. Yep. Yeah, it was some sort of weird shit. That was cool. That was cool. I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I actually, I, I'm probably going to have to go pick that up at Trade Form so I can reread it. That's, 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 that's they're going to they're gonna bring the Eternals, man. They're going to bring the Eternals to the MCU, to the movie verse. So. Who are the Eternals? Uh, they are, um, what you call it? the Celestials, when they came to Earth, they uh, genetically engineered the uh, Neanderthals. Oh, here it goes. Ancient aliens. Yeah, yeah basically. It's ancient, it's ancient alien theory. Nice. And celestials, be, uh, not the Celestials, the Eternals are the inspiration for uh, all the gods that we have today, like uh, Zeus and Hermes and all that stuff. So they, they have like, godlike powers. Mm. And then you have the, the, the Eternals and there's the Deviants. So the Deviants are like kind of like they're shapeshifters. Uh, so they're kind of like the, the demons of lore, you know what I mean? Right. 
Actually, uh, Thanos is is a uh, a deviant. Nice. So he's yeah. part of like that whole kind of that whole lineage. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you real quick. What did you think of the three parter, Old Man Raphael? Holy oh, shit, cool, dude! It was fucking awesome. How awesome was that damn? All right, before we get into the this, whole series is the whole fun. series. All right, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had a cartoon that came out on Nickelodeon. They rebooted it in 2012, and it ran for five seasons. Four seasons with like a an extra like the, the fifth season is like an extra credit kind of like post credit scene, a bunch of episodes that were like post credit scenes. And the, the whole series was really awesome. Some episodes were more cartoon than others. But the end of the series, the end of the series was a three-parter called Raphael Mutant Apocalypse Part 1, 2, and 3. And this was like the X-Men, the end comic. This was like the end of the Turtles. And this is what I'm going at it with as a personal, the end version of the turtles, the their last story, what happens to them? Roughly, I don't know, like fifty. To, I want to say almost a hundred years in the future is what it seemed like. Take it away. And there was okay, so there was some sort of like bomb that went off, a mutagenic bomb that kind of like killed a bunch of people, and whoever survived became mutants. So there was no more humans left, and the whole of or the whole world was wiped out, and everyone was either killed or turned into a mutant. Continue. Right. Almost couldn't stop the bomb. That's what happens. The bomb drops on Manhattan, and they can't stop it. Go ahead. So now, uh, uh, there's only Raphael and uh, was it Donatello left, right? Yeah. Uh, they supposedly Michelangelo's dead and Leonardo's dead. Yeah. So it's just it's just Raphael and Donatello in like this giant like Dark Knight friggin' returns like truck. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, uh, Donatello's consciousness was in a robot. Yeah, Donatello's body gets so damaged by this blast that he uploads his consciousness into the uh, is that, that that turtle that they have that's like made of metal. They upload he uploads his consciousness into the turtle that that machine and metalhead mark. Yeah. So he's dead. So basically, Donatello proper is dead, and he's now his consciousness is in a robot. It's it's outrageous. It's basically Mad Max, Old Man Logan, and the Ninja Turtles. And then you got Rock. You got Raphael. He's he's got like this, like uh, kind of like the armored Batman suit in a way. Yeah. And he's a, he has a beard. Is that a fake beard? No, it's a, he shaves. Yeah, he, he has a beard like. I mean, so I guess they had to make him look grizzled, but like since when did the? Well, I, I looked at it like this. They first of all, it's a kids' cartoon, but at the same time, if you want to make any sense of it, when that bomb goes off, they all maybe mutate again. Right. So maybe he like had that's like another level of his mutation. That's the only thing. Problem with the fucking like, why would a turtle grow hair? Yeah. But other than that, uh, and then you have in the second episode, the Great Chalupa shows up. Oh, that was awesome, right? Great Chalupa. <laughs> then basically, Michelangelo's like a crazy hermit. Because he's been separated from his brothers for like decades. Yeah. Like this, like he went nuts and like took up refugee in a pizza store. <laughs> it's him, Ice Cream Kitty. Ice Cream Kitty joke is funny because that's from the first season. Basically, in this Ninja Turtles canon, when you touch the mutagen, anything you last interacted with or touched, you mutate into. So the the when the kitty cat touched the mutagen, right before it touched the mutagen, it was eating ice cream. So when the mutagen hit it, it turned into Ice Cream Kitty. And that's how the mutagen in this world works, basically. Which is <laughs> that's why he was all fucking all distorted. Yeah, he's like melted ice cream. He's Ice Cream Kitty. It's a joke from the first season. I love that show. And this show is just freaking great. The first, what, two seasons, though? Like, so then you have, uh, what's his name? Um, Michelangelo. He's wearing like a freaking Mexican poncho. Yeah. And he's like a nomad uh, in the desert, basically. He's like, um, who's those two stoners? So he acts like... Uh, Chachi and Chuck. Uh, Chi and Chong. Ch Jody loves Chachi. <laughs> no, Chi and Chong. He worships the great pepperoni, right? Yeah, he's he, he's really awesome. Anyways, I would definitely start with the, the beginning of this series. Like, if you guys have a way to stream this, start with the beginning. The first two seasons are amazing. A couple of uh, episodes, but most of the time it's really cool. They throw in a lot of references to, like, big like one episode they fight the bad guys from Big Trouble Little China. Another episode... Um, these squirrels get mutated with alien DNA and they become the squirrelnoids and it's basically a, a play on the movie Aliens of all the squirrels in New York City turning into like aliens and start hatching. They have like the, the mouth inside the mouth and stuff. It's crazy. 
And anyway. then there's a crossover with the original cartoon too. Yes, there's a card that they cross over dimensions with the original cartoon. They bring the cartoon from the 80s back, and they're drawn a certain way, and they exist in, the, in their, their universe is kind of like cartoon versions. It's crazy. But uh, getting back to the, the mutant apocalypse, uh, Raphael's story, um, they run into Michelangelo. He's a hermit in the desert, and then... And then what happens? Oh, um, oh they're looking for, this, uh, looking for this girl who has a map tattooed on her arm. Yeah. The Mercat or something? Yep. Yeah. He has like the uh, the only way to get to like the whole world is basically like, like Mad Max. It's like a giant wasteland. He has the map to to an o oasis. Yes, it's this place mm -hmm. called Oasis, which is funny because they you know the Oasis is big now. The name Oasis at least with um, Ready Player One. So they have to find the Oasis, and that's basically where like the only last place where there's water and uh, and like greenery and trees and shit. Uh uh, Bats and Turtles is a great crossover. Yes, Batman Turtles uh, comic is an awesome comic. That's a great freaking crossover. I love that artist, man. I, I forgot his name, but he's on... Uh, there's an Injustice and uh, Masters of the Universe crossover that he's drawing. The artist, right? The, the same artist. Yeah, yeah. I gotta check that yeah. out, because that comic was really dynamite. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't want to go through the rest of it. Go watch Raphael, Mutant Apocalypse. Yeah. Then we're going to give away spoilers because the, the ending has the biggest spoiler. It blew my mind. Yeah, it just blew your mind, right? Yo, it's crazy, bro. It so go on. It to be that way. Like, I, I was loving it as it was, and then I was like, wow, this got dark. And then that's the end. It ends. It's like the end of their story and their journey. It's so fucking poetic. The violence is excellent. They're just blowing people up left and right. Yeah. Right? Kids cartoon that does that show does get pretty pretty crazy, especially in that episode. I was like, yo, like this is pretty intense. I was watching it with Grayson. Like, yo, this is pretty intense. I love when people get jumped. They get jumped. You yeah, know? he gets beat down in this. So those biker guys, they're like these biker um I forgot like what are they like these biker mutant guys that jump Raphael with bats and they bat his ass down. Honey badger. Honey badger. Um okay, so that's for the Mutant Apocalypse. You give it the thumbs up. I'm glad I put you on to that. Everybody else, go watch TMNT 2012, Raphael, Mutant Apocalypse Part 1, 2, and 3. It was a Nickelodeon TV show. Go watch the whole series. But you guys should get up. Fans of the Turtles. Season 5, Episode 11. Right? Episode, yeah, Season 5, Episode 11, 12, and 13. Go watch that crossover. If you like the Turtles, you're going to love this freaking cartoon. Okay. Uh, and I'm like a casual fan of the Turtles. and I, I, was, I love it. Yo. Did they make action figures of those versions? <laughs> yeah, here's one right here. What? Yeah, bro, I got the whole I got the whole set. Well, I can't see it. Which one is it? That when you were like riding high off the show and you had to order all the figures. Yes, this it, is. Raphael. No, I want the the Raphael in the the future outfit. Oh no, they didn't. They, that's this was this is. We um, have the action figures. This isn't <laughs> this isn't figure arts. What's that? Um. That company that does the this Revel Tech. This is a Revel Tech cartoon version of Raphael from that. But as far as like a, the old man Logan Raphael, no, that car the cartoon's been canceled. They're already on to the new oh, turtles they're not make those figures. with the new thing. Yeah, they're not making those figures. figures. I know. I'm a great chalupa, man. Yeah, no, I know, man. Those are pretty dope. Okay, so real quick for those of you that uh, want like unboxing videos, go watch my last video that I uploaded. It was an unboxing from Factory Entertainment. Factory Entertainment is a company that does high end collectibles and also plushies and things like that. They do a lot of different movie licenses. And I bought a $100 blind box, and I got like $270 worth of goodies. But Baza hasn't seen it, so I'm just going to pull a few of the goodies out that I got in the blind box. So it was 100 bucks free shipping, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive blind box. The first thing I pulled out of the box was this, a King Kong lunchbox, which was a, it's a lunchbox tin. It's really cool. It's got the crazy, scary eyes on top. And it's an actual, like, nice old school looking lunchbox. So this was one of the things I got. I got these Outlander cards, which are like stationary. That was one of the small things. They're like pop up cards. I got this Harley Quinn statue. That I, this is the reason why I'm showing this is that this this giant, this $100 Harley Quinn statue they sent me. Americana. An anime con uh, heroin series, Harley Quinn. And. The disappointing thing about this, I didn't want to put in the actual review. As soon as I opened this up, and I was opening it mad careful, and I was filming too. I wasn't doing it live. As soon as I opened it up, it fell to pieces. Like, it literally fell apart like, in my hand. 
part of her arm and her accessories. Oh, yeah, her arm, her accessories, part of her tassels just fell off and crumbled. So it's a very, very, very delicate statue, but it is quite expensive. So I'm con contacting that them on Monday for either a refund or for them to send me a new one. But they did put this awesome statue in there. And this Talking Ghostbusters Peter Venkman statue which has like a $40 or a $50 value with some stuff. It says all this, the nice juicy things from the movie, like let's show the prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. And Wait, why, why, are the, why is the Ghostbuster a guy? I thought they were girls. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. Ghostbusters are girls. I hate you. <laughs> That's so fire. I need, it's so hot. I need, I need to bring in the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Here's little thing I got. I got these uh, Aunt Lucia DC Comics bombshell lithograph prints they put in there. I love bombshells. The bombshells are really nice, right? There's 10 lithograph prints. I'm trying to get a nice up-close shot of all Watch of those. The video. Okay, here's the Matrix. What was the He-Man crossover again? It was uh, Injustice uh, and uh, Masters of the Universe crossover. It just came out last week, the first issue. So you get, I mean, if you get comics online, you can go to Comicsology and pick that up. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to wait for the trade for that. I got to wait for trades. I'm going to trade. Excellent. I don't know if I had Comicsology, I'd probably just be able to read it as it came out, right? Or yeah, that's what you do. Like, you know, you don't have to drive to a comic store. You don't have to freaking wait for shit in the mail. You, you click, order it, and then you read. I know, man, but I like going into comic shop, man. Those things, those days, they're days are numbered. What comic book shop? There aren't that many left. And I know. I know. Here's another little thing I got. What is it? This is uh, Temple Run plushie. That I'm going to wake Grayson up out of the middle of the night and scare the hell out of him with. That's going to end up in the garbage in like a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is ugly. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll put it in one of my blind boxes or like use it for not that specifically for a giveaway, but I'll just. Like, Does anybody like Temple something. Run? Let us know. If anybody likes Temple Run, let us know. You know, but this is the cool thing. I really like this. The King Kong one. Yo, I have one, dude. I got um, uh, what you call it? William Shatner. Oh, nice Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, right on one side. You know the episode with the gremlin on the on the plane. Yep. And then you got you flip it. You got Captain Kirk. Wow, that's crazy. What is yeah. that? Is that a lunchbox? A lunchbox. Yeah, same oh. thing. Oh, is that the TV knobs and stuff? That's cool. Yeah. Like a retro TV, like lunchbox, something. That's thermos. really freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, right? She's like, does it come with a thermos? No thermos. That sucks. I love thermos. But uh, uh, that's it. That's all I got on the docket. If there's anything else you want to say before we sign off and bid our fans. Not down. That's good enough. I'm ready to go jerk off. Oh, great. All right. Well, you know, you heard it from the man himself. Uh, yeah. Thank everybody for joining us for this. This was our best one yet. We had a lot of fan interact. Well, you guys aren't fans. You're part of the family. We had a lot of family interaction. Wait, who wins the prince? Who wins the prince? The prince? Yeah. Uh, who's the winner of the, ra of, uh, the raffle? I'm going to I'm gonna have to do a, the, the random comment, comment generator. The video, once the video's yeah, uploaded. once the video's uploaded, they have to comment on the video. Okay. Unless you just want to pick somebody off the top of your head, and then it's kind of, kind of shove, every, you know. All right, so no, so let's do it that way. All right, so after this is uploaded, comment on the video, and whoever comments on the video will be entered into the uh, they have until the thing. I don't know. They'll have like how long you want to give them. How long I want to give them? Yeah, you want to give it a week. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe we'll do it next Saturday. Maybe we'll do the drawing next Perfect. Saturday. At the Perfect. Next we'll be next people. All right. We'll do the the random comment generator drawing. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Hope you had fun. Uh, hope we made your Saturday night a little bit more enjoyable. I'm Rob. That's Baz. You've seen the figures here, and we hope you join us next week for your next weekly dose of pop culture uh, talk. See you guys around. Later, fellas. Bye.